Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101, introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Welcome to Jesus 101. We are starting a brand new series entitled Chosen, when you trust God with a purpose for your life. And we're going to go through some biblical narratives about people that were called by God uh, to do things that they were not expecting. And as a matter of fact, today we're trying to answer a question. What if there's a detour? Does God abandon you when you take a detour or does he still bless you? And what if the detour ends up in an oppressive situation um, where you don't feel free anymore, where you are saying, hey, these are the consequences of what I have done and, and, and now God cannot be with me anymore. Can he use me? Can he do anything good with me after this? Well, we're, gonna help it, we're hoping to answer some of those questions today. Um, I don't know of anybody that is oppressed um, that doesn't want to be free. And that oppression can take any form. It can be jail, or it can be an abusive relationship, or it can be just a storm that you are feeling stuck in emotionally or spiritually, or, or maybe uh, you're addicted to drugs or some other kind of pain that you're saying, well, can God be with me if I'm oppressed, if I am enslaved? Can he help me? Uh, perhaps you remember a story um, I actually love the story because I followed it on the news. Um, it's in my, one of my latest books. Uh, the, bo the book is entitled, I Will Give You Rest. And by the way, if you're watching in a different country, you can download all my books on Amazon digitally. So this one is there too, I Will Give You Rest. And um, this, uh, this chapter, um, chapter five, I started it with this story about a woman who had been oppressed and enslaved for several years. And you know who I'm talking about because I'm sure you watched it on the news as well. And this is the way it starts. Help me, I'm Amanda Berry. With one frantic 911 call on Monday evening, three women missing for years were found in a Cleveland house where they had been held against their will by three brothers, police in Ohio said. I've been kidnapped. Barry, who disappeared a decade ago, told the dispatcher, I've been missing for 10 years and I'm out here. I'm free now. Barry and two other women, Gina De Jesus and Michelle Knight, were missing when between 2000 and 2004 in separate incidents. The women were all between the ages of 14 and 20 when they vanished. This was one of those news, um, of, uh, of, of the news that you follow for several days to see how this is going to end. The three of them were set free by that 911 call and they were reunited with their families. I don't know what it feels like to be enslaved for so many years. Um, the woman that we're going to study today felt enslaved, uh, felt oppressed, felt mistreated. I think there's uh, many kinds of oppression. Some we inflict on ourselves, some are mistakes from the past, some are our choice. Um, but I have news for you. God is with us, even in the worst times of our lives, um, when we think that there's no way we could have a God so big that he could be with me in a situation like this. And as we start our series, we want to welcome our guest of honor, Pastor Mike Tucker. Thank, Thank you, you for so being much. here. Thank you for being here. It's my joy. Glad we, to we, be here. we love to have you. We've done other series together. Mm -hmm. We have. And um, actually, uh, you are a very funny person. Is that right? <laughs> Are no, you talking about my looking. looks? No, no, no. That, not funny because that looking, would be not, very offensive. It, it, well, no, no. I'm no. not talking about that, uh, if, even though there's a little bit of that. No, but but that's not why we bring you All here. All right. No, you're a very insightful man. You actually have a master's in, um, what is it, in education? Counseling. In counseling? In counseling, yeah. Right. And so you bring great insights uh, about the stories of the Bible, and I'm always thankful that well, you're thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you much. Um, and so we're going to embark in this new series um, 
a series that will go through different biblical narratives mm -hmm. uh, where people that we were not expecting get chosen by God. I, I love the fact that God chooses us. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he told his disciples, you haven't, you know, you didn't choose me. I, ch I chose you. <laughs> I yeah. chose you. And, and the good news is that he chooses only broken people. He mm -hmm. chooses those that no one else would, would choose. Mm -hmm. If you ever played uh, games at recess in, in school and you were chosen last, then you're the one that God wants. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it something? Because I think religion sometimes has given a different view, uh, like God chooses the strong, mm -hmm. God chooses the one that has it mm -hmm. all together, mm -hmm. God chooses... But that's not what I find in the Bible. No. He, he is the champion of the outcast. He's the champion of the broken. Hmm. He's the, the champion of the discarded. Because it seems that in those individuals, he has more opportunity to make his glory revealed than in anyone else. And so if you feel like your brokenness has disqualified you, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I, I think this is one of the, uh, the best messages we can give today, that if there has been a detour in your life, mm -hmm. that you think disqualifies you to be mm -hmm. used by God, God. God has this GPS that reroutes, reroutes, reroutes. Mm -hmm. I, now I call it God's GPS grace positioning system instead yeah, of a yeah. global positioning global. system because he has done it so many times in my life. I did so many things that that disqualify me mm -hmm. to do a, anything for God. Yeah. And God every time recalculating, recalculating. Yeah, any moment right. that you turned your your eyes uh, towards heaven and said, okay, God, please help me. Yeah, but someone said that God's always got a plan B, but I think he's down to about plan X, Y, Z for me. You know? <laughs> I think he started the alphabet but, with yeah, me. Yeah, but he's, <laughs> he's, still, he's still working with me. Yeah. And he does that with all of us. And that's the good news about his grace. Well, today we're gonna talk about a woman who was enslaved, um, enslaved and she was oppressed and she was distressed and she was desperate. So we have called this program, The Desperate Woman. And we are talking actually about Hagar. Mm -hmm. Hagar was a slave. You know, I think it's very interesting how God always worked with his people in whatever culture they were. Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously we don't agree with slavery no, absolutely anymore. Not. And um, but at this time people had help, had slaves. And so God always elevated the culture a little higher, saying, treat your slaves well, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. Even in the New Testament, now we don't have slaves anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Which was was the plan all along. All along, because it God never step by step he takes us. Exactly. There. Because in the image of God, we're all in the image of God. Mm -hmm. There's not one person or one color, one race or one accent mm -hmm. that is better than the other. That's right. That's, That's right. right. So your Texan accent and my Latino accent. Well, Texans a little, <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> no, 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 okay. no it's, not, right. it's not a little bit better. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> so in Genesis chapter 15, God promises Abraham, uh, that is still named Abraham at that time, that he will have a son, you know. And so uh, he thinks it's gonna be his uh, servant, Eliezer, and God says, no, 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 it's gonna be no. your son. So they're waiting, they're waiting, and the son is not coming. And they've waited a long time because uh, Abram is pretty old. Yes. He's pretty old. He's, he's getting older and older, and, and I think, how long do you wait until you try to help God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because I, I've done that type of thing. It's like, okay, God has promised me all these things, and they're not coming, so, okay, I gotta help yeah, God. What, what can I do to make this happen? Yeah. Yes, and, and. That's always a mistake. Always. Always a mistake. <laughs> And, and I've seen, I've seen uh, powerful religious leaders try to do the same thing. Yeah. It's always a mistake. Oh, yes. God doesn't always. need your help. I, I, no. I, I, uh, I have a sign, and, and I have talked about this in other programs in the past, on, on my refrigerator. Mm -hmm. This says, good morning, I'm God. I don't need your help today, yeah. so relax and have a nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is so hard for me. because like Like Sarah... Mm -hmm. uh, Abram's wife that at this point in Genesis 16 is, is still named Sarai uh, or Sarai, like they say in English. Mm -hmm. uh, she gets, she says, I have an idea. God is not coming through with this. Yeah. And we have a girl that is my slave. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because uh, how much, uh, do you know how much uh, a slave cost no. in the times of the Old Testament? I did not buy one back then. <laughs> I was around then. You were? You know, <laughs> I did not buy you one. You were around in the Old yeah, Testament, yeah, but didn't yeah, buy one. Yeah, I didn't okay. buy one. No. Well, see, if you if you go to um, uh, certain parts of the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible, you will find that by with 20 shekels of, of silver, you could mm -hmm. buy a male slave, a which male was slave. a lot more than a female, female. slave. But shekels were not coins like 
minted coins like like we have now. Mm -hmm. Now there were four point zero point four ounces of silver. Mm -hmm. That was a shekel, okay. so it didn't need to look like a coin. It was mm -hmm. just a measure of weight. A, a lump of, of silver. Yeah, but it had to weigh that. Mm -hmm. Zero point four was a shekel mm -hmm. of, of silver. So twenty would get a, a, you a male one. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, for a woman, they had a female one, mm -hmm. and they brought her from Egypt. So she's an Egyptian, which is very diff very interesting because in Exodus, the roles are going to be reversed. Yeah. The yeah. descendants of Abraham will be the slaves, be and the, the Egyptians slaves. will be the masters. the masters. But here we have the Egyptian is the slave, and Abraham is the master. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting yeah. how and roles he, get reversed? Yeah, and obviously to be a slave is not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you have to be a slave, to be a slave in the household of one of the few people who worship the true God yes. on the planet yes. at that time, yeah. who is going to treat you more humanely, would be a, a better place to be. Yes. But still, this is not a good thing. Yes, and you are expecting the humanely part, and all of a sudden, we are a little shocked here with what happens mm -hmm. on, on Genesis 16. So let's let's get started reading perhaps uh, the first two verses. Of, of Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, Now behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I will obtain children through her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. See, so Abraham, uh, like uh, Jacob will do later, later he says, mm -hmm. okay, okay, whatever you say. Give and by me. the way, this was not out of the ordinary for no, no, a woman no, no. to offer her handmaiden to her husband exactly. to raise and, her children for but her. But it's very interesting because it says in verse 3 that Hagar the Egyptian, her maid, uh, was taken. Uh, uh, this, yeah, taken. These, these verbs say she didn't have a choice on it. Right. On the matter. So she was taken and given uh, to her husband Abraham as his wife. So yeah. not only... W was she trying to get children, but now she, the servant becomes a wife. Well, if, if the child is going to be a child of promise, it needs to be, be with from a, a wife yeah. rather than just... Uh, yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So so obviously she becomes his wife. This is quite an elevation for the slave girl. Whether, yeah, yeah, whether yeah, she yeah. wanted it or not, yeah, absolutely. she's now being elevated. Yes, yeah, so we, we have this happy couple. <laughs> this is Abram and Sarai. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and it's it's one of those couples that if, you know if they were on TV today they're like the perfect couple. She's mm -hmm. beautiful. He loves her. Mm -hmm. We could do a whole soap opera on them. Mm -hmm. But now we get a, a love triangle. Mm -hmm. And see, if you thought love triangles were only issues of soap operas, yeah. the, the Bible is, is filled, filled with them, with them yeah. because humankind has all kinds of problems. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the problems is when we want to help God achieve his, his plans. So let's keep reading uh, from verse 4 on. He went into Hagar and she conceived, and when she saw that she conceived, her mistress was despised in her sight. Yeah, so let, let me bring the third woman. So there we, we have a little triangle here. There we go. There's our little triangle. Okay. So she was only a slave. Mm -hmm. She was an Egyptian slave from the time when uh, he had been in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They brought a slave, right? Mm -hmm. So she's supposed to work for her. Now she's his wife too. Mm -hmm. In the moment she conceives, she despises. Yeah. Well, I've, after all, she's done something the old gal couldn't do. Th that's, you know? that's the point. I, it's I'm like, better than you. I'm finally, I finally got my, my due. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I'm married to this rich guy. He's old, but you know he's rich. <laughs> and I've done something you couldn't do. I bore, I'm bearing him a child. And your wife can't even feel like that because you're old, but you're not rich. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, she stuck with me, and I'm, I'm not, not rich. rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she must really love you. You are a cruel yeah, woman. Yeah, yeah. I, I she don't know must why really I come back here. <laughs> <laughs> she must really <laughs> love you. But, and so so what happened was, Sarah says, look what happened to me now. Yeah. My own slave mm -hmm. is despising me. Well, don't you love this wording? And may the wrong done, uh, done me be upon you. No, I gave her to you, but you know what? This is your fault. <laughs> No, don't start what? making fun of women what? because this is way we're the way she we are. She gave her to him yes, and now it's him. his fault. Well, you should have said no. <laughs> I, I don't know what. <laughs> I should say okay to everything you say. But you know what? This is human nature and I love it that it hasn't changed in, yes. in all the eons of our existence. All, you know, Your the, wife the is going to get back to you after this it program. It has not changed. Yeah, well, she's, she people said, are people. Yeah, exactly. And she said, you know, this wrong that was done upon me, she didn't say it was yeah. my idea. Yeah. I gave my but, maid into your arms when she saw no, that she did leave out that detail. Yeah, <laughs> it was my idea to him say yeah. it. I was despising her side. And Abraham said to Sarai, verse 6. But Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your power. Do to her what is good in your sight. He said, I, I don't want to deal with this. Just stand this on is, yeah. Do whatever you want to yeah. do. Even do though she has do. my child, yeah. 
She's Even though she's now my wife. Yes, she, you do whatever you want. So uh, she starts treating her harshly, mm -hmm. and and Hagar decides this is too much. I can't live like this. Yeah. Who can live oppressed? Mm -hmm. You know, um, this this desire for um, freedom and purpose in our lives was given by God to oh, us. Oh, absolutely. There's not one human being that I know that doesn't have this. Hey, I have potential. I have something. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve to be treated mm -hmm. this way. And and she left, but she found herself in trouble. Now, this was a detour. This was not God's original plan. The plan mm -hmm. was that obviously Sarah would have yes. one. Sarah got a little anxious, like mm -hmm. many of us get sometimes with God, and she took a detour. Mm -hmm. Can God help us after we take a detour? Obviously. I mean, because I don't know of anyone who hasn't taken a detour. <laughs> Do you know of anyone who has allowed God to work their will in their life perfectly? I actually uh, don't. I don't either. Not, 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 not even in the Bible no, other than you Jesus. You don't find it in the Bible. You don't find it in anyone else's life that I know of. Mm. God works with people who take detours. He's always got, he, he will reroute like the, the GPS does mm. and, and does me frequently, mm. rerouting, you know, and make a U-turn. Yes, he, yes. he will reroute you, but he always works with people that way. The, I, I am amazed about that part of God because, yeah. because I think everybody, one time I got this young adult that said, you know, I made so many mistakes in my youth. I did so many things that mm -hmm. God doesn't approve. Now I want to settle down, get married. Do you think God can bless me mm -hmm. with a good marriage after all I've done? There you know, you and I'm going, hey, let me tell you about, you know, David and Bathsheba and how yeah. God gave them the wisest man that ever lived, mm -hmm. uh, Solomon, from that marriage. From that marriage, yeah. You know, how God takes all things and works something good, which is, yeah, it, it is amazing to me. It is. But everyone takes detours and God works with detours. Yes. Because he's working with imperfect people. Imperfect people. And, and no one has messed your life up so severely that you can't be used by God. And look what happens next. She uh, uh, she left, mm -hmm. verse she, 8. Going um, back to Egypt. Yes. He's go, she's going back to her homeland. Hey, mm -hmm. forget these people. I'm, I'm out I, of here. I, yeah, I'm out of here. And so... Um, uh, the angel finds her in the in in the desert. She's she doesn't have any water. She's she's needing water. She thinks everybody has left her, and the angel starts talking to her. Verse seven of the same chapter. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? Those are two good questions to ask, by the way, whenever you're in crisis. Yeah, where are you? Yeah, where yeah, have yeah, you come from and, and where, where are you going? going? Yeah, that's interesting. And, and she said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sari. Mm. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, all right, here's the answer, right? Yeah. This is going to fix it all. Yeah. Return to your mistress and submit yourself to her authority. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I mean, yeah. she's treating me harshly, and yeah. this baby, I don't know where it came from, but, you know, it's yeah. not my fault. Yeah. And then the angel promises something yeah. that I have to tell you, there's nothing like it in the rest of the Bible. Mm -hmm. No woman without a man is promised descendants in this way. You mm -hmm. know, th these are some of the greatest promises of descendants like to Abraham and other people that you're, you're going to have a great nation, right. multiply this and that, but, but never to a woman by herself. Mm -hmm. This is the only time. Mm -hmm. And and this was a detour. Yeah. And God says, hey, I have it handled. Yeah. And, and you're going to be blessed. So he says, go back and submit. But but understand this. this. Yes, Here's the but. Verse Moreover, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be too many to count. Hmm. The angel of the Lord said further, Behold, you are with child and, your, and you will bear a son and you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand will be against him and he will live uh, to the east of, of all his, his brothers. brothers. Now, Ishmael means God hears. God hears. <clears throat> I love this name, Ishmael. See, El, uh, everybody knows El mm -hmm. means God, right? God. Like Emmanuel, mm -hmm. El, God mm -hmm. with us. Ishmael means he has heard me He's or heard God, me. God has heard me or God hears. Every time she called her son, it was God hears, it's time to get up. Oh, I love God that. hears, it's time for lunch. That's an amazing <laughs> God thing, hears, isn't it? come here. Yeah. yeah. It is, is, is a constant reminder that even in our detours, mm -hmm. God, God, hears. Hears. God hears. And not only God hears, but she 
names God because she doesn't know who is this God. She yeah. has heard from Abraham yeah. and Sarai, but she has not uh, met this God. And she says, wow, what an incredible God. Mm -hmm. And so she is going to give God a name. a name. And this is the only time a woman gives God well, a, a name. name yeah. So this is a very interesting narrative. Verse then she, 13. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God who sees. For she said, I have, uh, have I even remained alive here after seeing him? So she called him, and the, and the Hebrew is El Roi, mm -hmm. the God who sees. God who so sees. not only is he the God who hears, like Ishmael, mm -hmm. but he is El Roi, this the God who This is the God who, who sees. sees you, who hears you in your affliction. When you're uh, uh, alone at home crying and no one else sees, he hears the cries, he sees the tears, he is with you. Yeah, I, I think this is a very important lesson and we are going to um, pause for a moment on this. You know, um, all of us have had times in our lives where the telephone doesn't ring and there's no mail in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, when it seems like nobody cares um, <laughs> nobody hears, nobody knows what's going on. Uh, you know, th there was a whole stage here in the United States of people that were slaves. Mm -hmm. They they came up with a whole genre of music, uh, of music, the, yeah, spirituals. the spirituals. Yeah, and I just love it because all this 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 songs are uh, are the slaves thinking that there is a God that is greater than their situation. Mm -hmm. uh, swing low, swing chariot, coming for to carry me, me home. home, because this is not my home, mm -hmm. you know? I'm being oppressed here, I'm a slave here, mm -hmm. but I have inheritance over there. There's a heart crying out to the God who sees, the God who hears. Even yeah. in the midst of my oppression, he sees and he hears me and I can trust him. Yeah, you know, I think one of the hardest times in my life, um, I had several and you did too. Um, one of them was my divorce from my first husband um, after 15 years, and, and I remember uh, picking up a song and making it my divorce song, you know, and I kept singing it. Keep me safe till the storm passes, passes by. by. Yeah. And, and it was like, nobody else knows what I'm feeling, but mm -hmm. you do. So in the hollow of your hand, keep mm -hmm. me safe till the storm passes by. And and this song, I, I must have sung it, I don't know how many times a day, because you feel nobody else knows what you're going through other than God sees mm -hmm. you, God hears you. And and you learn new things about God when you, the only thing you have left is God and you realize God is enough. You, you know, I've, I've not grown much when times were good. <laughs> wow. But when times are bad, I, I'm on steroids. <laughs> Isn't it I something? Yeah. You grow, uh, there's no, you grow. why is it that God has to allow sometimes certain things in our, in our, in our yeah. lives? Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know why it is, but I do know that the best lessons are taught in the crucible of pain. Mm. Uh, it is, in fact, again, I've spoken of young pastors who are who have talent, but I know that in order to really be able to minister, they need some brokenness. Wow. Uh, because we, we don't minister really until we that become is, that wounded is healers. So true. Well, you know that this was uh, not the only time that Hagar ran away. Eventually she had the baby. Mm-hmm. And the baby grew, and Ishmael um, was the only baby in the house. Everybody was crazy about the baby mm -hmm. until Sarah mm -hmm. had a baby. Okay, so now we're going to go to Genesis 21 just for a moment. Right before the big test that all of you know about, Genesis 22, when, when God will ask Abraham to offer his son Isaac, the, the, the one of the promise, uh, Genesis 21 Isaac is born. He's a he's a little baby. Mm -hmm. Ishmael is no longer a baby. No. He's now in his teens. Mm -hmm. And you know, Sarah and Abraham um, tell Hagar she has to go. Yeah. And and we can't understand how Abraham would let this happen. It's an inconceivable. Yeah. And, and so so all we we are told here is that God God says to Abraham, okay, I'm going to take care of her mm -hmm. because Sarah and 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 Hagar cannot get cannot coexist anymore. So it's, it's so, so sad. Look at chapter 21, verse 14. All that Abraham can do is put a little bit of bread and a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you read verse 14? So Abram rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar, putting them on her shoulder and gave her the boy and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. And then Verse 15, the water in the skin was used mm -hmm. up and she left the boy who was now in his, in his teens, teens under, a under a bush because she didn't want to hear him 
mm-hmm. cry. Yeah, as he died. And one more time, mm-hmm. God heard his cry. Mm-hmm. Because that's his name, Ishmael. God hears. God hears. So read verse 17. So God heard the, the lad crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter with you, Hagar? Uh, do not fear, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. And that is a play in his name. God yeah. has heard the cry, yeah. and his name is God hears. God hears, God hears even uh, people that have taken mm-hmm. detours. God hears, arise, lift up the lad, verse 18, and hold him by the hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Mm-hmm. And then God opened her eyes. She saw a well, a well of, water, of water, and it, this, this ends by saying, God was with the lad, verse 20. He mm-hmm. grew, he lived in the wilderness. He took an Egyptian woman as, and, as his uh, wife. Mm-hmm. And the whole nation that we now know as Muslims mm-hmm. comes from Ishmael. from Ishmael. So Abraham becomes the father of faith of three monotheistic religions. Mm-hmm. So the Jews come from right, Abraham, from Abraham through Jacob. Muslims come through uh, Abraham through mm-hmm. Ishmael. Mm-hmm. And Christians are the new Israel because Abraham's descendant is Jesus. Mm-hmm. So we have three large monotheistic religions coming from this situation from, yeah, that, that we have situation. here. And God is with all of them. Mm-hmm. That That's the amazing thing for mm-hmm. me, that God was God loves all with groups. Ishmael. Yeah. He loves all groups. All of those groups have erred. Yes. But God loves them and works through them. Yeah. Isn't it amazing yeah. that God loves all of us? I uh, thank you, Mike, for being with us. I'm going to head to the cross to finish the program. Very good. I love this song. You heard this song, the, uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow? Yes. Yes. It's you know, his eye, his eye was on Hagar and yeah. Ishmael. And I can't believe that his eye is on me. Mm-hmm. But it's true. Thank you for being here. And we want to remind you of that. If you are in a detour in your life, um, maybe you took a wrong turn. Or maybe like Sarah, you tried to help God and now you have something in your hands and don't know what to do with it. Maybe you did have a child out of wedlock. Maybe you went to jail. Maybe you committed adultery. I I don't know what your uh, detour was or is. I just want to tell you, there's something amazing about God. Uh, And it's that name that we were given that many of us remember during Christmas, Emmanuel which means God with us. Um, God is with us, even in our detours. If if somebody taught you that theology that says, hey, if you go in there, God cannot go in there with you, don't don't believe it because the theology of the Bible is that we have a God that is much greater than our detours. And if I'm in a place where I shouldn't be because... It's not a good place for me. God doesn't say, ha, 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 you got yourself in trouble. Now you're on your own. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God I know. If not, I wouldn't even be here because he would have left me to, you know, in my detours, which I had many. No, his eye is on the sparrow. I, I love this little sparrows. You know, on the cross, he purchased the right to recalculate, recalculate. After, after all, the whole Bible is the story of how God recalculated the history of humanity. We took a big detour in Genesis 3. And if this God wasn't the God of the detours, none of us would be here. So remember this, God is with us. God sees you, God hears you, God loves you, God saves you, and God is with you.